Good morning. Uh, where's, nope, sorry, it's afternoon. I tend to be off on this a lot on my time. Um, wanted to, number one, I wanted to tell you good morning. And I also wanted to remind you that we have our Deliverance and Healing class tonight at 630 at 8801 West Union Hills Drive in Building D, Suite 200. You can go upstairs through the elevator or you can go upstairs through the steps. Look for our sign. Pretty simple to find us. Um, but I wanted to address, no, I'm not going to talk about Halloween. We already did that last night. And I'm sure some people got upset with me or more likely than not, they just scrolled by. But before you leave this video, because our attention span is so short, at least mine is, I want to just say shalom. I want to say shalom. I want to say peace to you. And if there's anything that... Uh, we have against one another. I want to bury it here today in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to be sure that my soul is not afflicted uh, by anything that would cause me to um, disgrace the role of ministry. And that means holding an offense against another person, a brother or sister in Christ, or, um, you know, living by rejection or having bitterness or anything like that. Why is that important? Um, it's important to me because that's what the Bible requires of us. But it's also important because there is a risk to doing deliverance ministry. And I am not, and my husband and I, my husband and I are not just deliverance ministry. That's not all that we do here at Spirit Wind Healing Ministries and Apostolic Training Center. That's why we have the and Apostolic Training Center. We wear a lot of hats around here. But our number one purpose is to do as Jesus did. You know, find the people, heal the people, train the people, release the people. That is our passion uh, in ministry. And that's why we do what we do. But our mantle is deliverance and healing. What does that mean? So we were called to deliver. I was personally called in a supernatural way to the ministry of deliverance and healing in 2009. In 2007, we were already serving at some capacity uh, in prayer ministry. And I was uh, working in a uh, domestic violence shelter with women. And I was, unbeknownst to me, doing different kinds of deliverance prayers and healing prayers and stuff like that. It's just always been my thing um, because that's what God has called me to. And out of doing this for so many years and as pastors, we have on more than one occasion encountered situations when a person we work with has gotten offended with us. And usually that's because there's some form of sin that we have confronted and they don't want to receive the biblical truth about that sin. And I recognize that sometimes it's it's common for those people because of they're either bound by pride and so they're what the Bible calls stiff-necked people and they refuse to hear uh, the Holy Spirit or their uh, and that blocks their ability to submit to God. Or it could be a deaf and dumb spirit over and over again. We hear having ears to hear, but do not hear. Having eyes to see, but do not see. Jesus said that himself. Plus he said uh, he blessed those to have ears to see and uh, or ears to hear and eyes to see. And he had to open the scriptures up for the disciples to give them understanding. And that's what the Bible says. And so I've learned over the years that if God hasn't opened somebody up, um, I'm certainly not going to open them up. If they haven't received the truth about holiness or about their pet sin, I can't force anyone to believe what I say, even though what I'm saying is coming straight from the Bible. Uh, there are a lot of topics out there that are controversial in the, bo in the body of Christ, Halloween being one of them, tattoos, drinking, homosexuality, pretty much anything that is considered a sin in the Bible is also able to be argued with because of some weird reason or another number one being we just we just have a sin issue of rebellion and we don't want to submit so sometimes what i have also found is the enemy will send a pharisaical or a pharisaical person to try and derail you from the work god has called you to uh, but when your motive is fear is pure you won't be offended the Bible says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone, Romans 12, 18. And 
as as far as it is possible on my behalf, I'd rather go in my prayer closet and work through whatever I did to offend somebody. And if I discover I really didn't do anything, not this time, it really wasn't me. Um, my deliverance was good. I did it out of love. I was quoting scripture verbatim or whatever uh, the encounter may be. Um, then I work on that part that might want to be rejected because somebody didn't receive me. And then after I've worked on that part, I, you know, make sure that the Lord softens my heart towards those people so that I will continue to love them even in disagreement. And so my husband received a message recently from somebody that we had quite a bit of people working with for a long time, at least a year plus the person was in classes for a long time. And this person has made a really bizarre accusation, uh, something they heard apparently, or they think they've heard in their sessions, but it never happened. And there's plenty of witnesses and I'm not here to hash that open. Nothing will become of it. But what it got me thinking about was how many times this happens to us, either because there's a altar and there's a wound or there's just a lack of ability to understand. Have you ever met those people that no matter what you say to them, they just don't understand. And there's, they're ignorant. There's no polite way of putting it. Some people are ignorant to what the word of God is. Some people have so much wounding and pain that when you talk to them, you speak into their lives, they don't understand and they receive it in a whole different language because there's a demon that is trying to take your words and twist them. There's a, that's what the Pharisees do. That's what they did to Jesus. They took his words and twisted them. They take a little bit of, uh, the devil will take a little bit of, of truth and, or, and just sprinkle, or he'll take a lot of truth and just sprinkle a little lie into it. Let's say that. And depending on the condition of our heart, we may or may not be able to sift that lie out of the truth. And so deliverance ministry is dangerous. And I think that's why a lot of people don't do it. I think that's why a lot of pastors don't engage in deliverance ministry. And then there's also the area where, you know, you're casting out a demon and somebody's going to manifest in some wacky, weird way, and you might not know what to do with it. I'm here to encourage you. You don't have to have all the answers. If I just stepped into doing deliverance and healing, which by the way, was not my decision. It was the decision to go and answer the call of God, which for everybody who answers the call of God, part of your calling is to cast out demons, period. You lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's what Jesus said to go and do. You preach the gospel. You're to help break chains around those who are bound, not just those who are not saved and get a hand raising, yes, I do, and never know what the result of that um, confession of faith is, if it's genuine or if it was just caught up in the moment. We are called to help people get free. And freedom requires work sometimes, and it is a process, and um, and it can be very uncomfortable and very um, bizarre to the onlooker. When you've done it for a while, as long as we have, you just kind of get used to it. You expect the unexpected every time. And so I just want to encourage you to be at peace as much as it depends on you. And if I say something in my messages that offend you, I want you to know that's never, ever, ever my heart. My heart is never to come after you. My heart is never to condemn you, degrade you, belittle you, ever, ever. Matter of fact, I've been known that if I have a peeve with you and something I've seen on social media, I will send a message privately. I will not blow you up all over Facebook or uh, the media and stuff. I, I just don't think that's the, what we should be producing out there as, as brothers and sisters in the faith of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you one more time, live in peace, shalom. Try to be that way with your brothers and sisters. If you've got an issue with somebody, first filter it through God. Make sure the issue isn't you. That's, that's a sign of maturity. If the issue is not you, then prayerfully consider how to approach the person or not approach the person and simply pray for the person. I think one of the biggest issues in the body of Christ is that we don't pray for each other. I reached out to a brother this morning and encouraged him, and I'm not saying this to tout two, two brothers this morning, uh, which is not 
always the norm for me, but just to encourage them to stay the course in the things that God has put their feet to. We all need encouragement. I personally need encouragement. It's tough out here sometimes. So if you're a pastor or a minister, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, uh, I want to just encourage you to stay the course, to remember that somewhere, whether it's it's a micro difference or a macro difference. You're making a difference. And if it's a, if it's a heavenly difference, then it's a large, huge, eternal, eternal difference. And so stay the course. Don't give up. And if you are somebody out there that really is uneducated and ignorant when it comes to certain things uh, about healing and deliverance or about um, your understanding of how altars work, maybe you're suffering from those things, try not to bash your brother and sister and those who are out there laboring uh, for the gospel because they're sacrificing something to do the will of God. God bless you on your Jesus journey.